Hi there everybody, today in this short video we're going to talk about shale oil and some uh, economic impact on oil market. So a little bit history. People used to extract oil out of whales but since they are limited people start to think about other ways to extract oil. So people um, actually in, in the late 1600 three people were granted a patent for the effort of being able to extract oil out of rocks by the British, uh, British Crown. Um, so the Industrial Revolution kicked in, a lot, of, a lot of countries, a lot of nations need energy, needs oil to build up their countries. So there was a huge demand uh, in terms of oil. So countries such as the US, China, New Zealand, some countries in Europe, start, France, start to produce or to build plants in order to produce shell oil. Until the mid um, 20th century when countries in the Middle East, especially Saudi Arabia, started to produce oil cheaply. That oil they were able to produce is a crude oil. So actually what's the difference between crude oil and, and shale oil, excuse me. So the difference is in terms of transportation, shale oil is only transportable or portable between 23 degrees Celsius to 27, whereas crude oil from negative 60 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. That's very important in terms of the existing pipeline system we have. Um, also in terms of extraction, extraction is costly for shale oil because you need to drill vertically as long as horizontally because the oil is trapped in rocks, whereas in crude oil, it, the oil traps in reservoir, so you only need to drill vertically. Uh, in terms of the energy return in energy invested, we can think of it as marginal cost, marginal benefit over marginal cost, or output over input. So that ratio is five for shale oil and 15 to 30 for crude oil. You see, you can see the it's more profitable to extract or to produce crude oil because the benefit is like 15, which is almost three times that, that of uh, shale oil. So there are three main processes to extract oil, shale oil particularly. Pyrolysis, which is heating and the absence of oxygen, which involves energy, work, more, more cost. Uh, also hydrogenation, which involves um, fluid rea uh, reactive fluids as well as thermal disassociation. Um, for shell oil, it doesn't come purely. It comes with 1% silver, 0.5% nitrogen, and oxygen and some of them they can destroy your catalyst so in order to uh, purify your shell oil you need to increase the ratio of hydrogen to carbon so if you increase the ratio of hydrogen to carbon you'll be able to upgrade your oil shell oil to crude oil so recent oil crisis 2014 2016 2011 was a starting point of middle east revolutions some countries in the Middle East. So started with Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, emerging with ISIS. All of these contribute, pre-factors contribute to the um, oil market crisis. Also, there is a nuclear, historical nuclear deal with Iran in 2015, uh, with the US and other European countries. And Iran is a big oil exporter, so that's a definitely lead to the oil prices crisis um, also some countries in the u.s some some industries in the u.s were able to produce shell oil using new technologies so that all those all prefactors affected the oil crisis so some limitation for shell oil for you one is water intensive so you need to provide a lot of water in order to produce shell, shell oil also there's co2 emission which contribute to the ga uh, gas green gas emissions all of these factors contribute to or actually limitation for shell oil protection. One last question before we end this uh, presentation. So can shell oil compete with renewable energy? If you ask an economist, he will tell you people respond to incentive. So if you have enough demand and if you have enough supply, things will work out. And it also depends on the short run, long term, all that, all these factors, a global warming, a, f a factor, are you, are you concerned with global warming or not, all that stuff. 
So it all, it all actually depends. But I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Thank